you've taken prosperity plus one, then you know already that Mary Morrissey is really a fantastic uh, teacher of metaphysics and of prosperity consciousness. Now, the difference with this class, so if you've taken prosperity plus one, uh, the difference in this class is that, that we, the students, are really stepping up our own commitment to do the work. So for those of us who have taught these kinds of classes, or maybe even just been involved with them, if you've been around religious science or new thought churches for a while, you've taken prosperity classes, and oftentimes we can get into them and go, yeah, I've heard that, yeah, okay, yeah, God is all there is, yeah, God's my source, yeah, okay. And, and, uh, and yeah, I know that, I know that. And yet we know there are areas in our life where we could express more fully, right? Regardless of how optimal our life is, there's always a place that we can participate and reveal more and expand more good into that. So it's not about going from bad to better. It's about going from good to great, okay? Or from, from better to best, if you will. And really, which all that is really about is just becoming more fully engaged in our life. You know, stepping away from the status quo, taking it off uh, cruise control, maybe even putting on the brake for a little bit and stopping, taking, uh, take, take our bearings, right? allow the GPS to recalibrate, and then hit the gas and take off again. So we're now exploring uh, the subtle ways of how we get in our own way. And this can be uh, interesting or uh, revealing and interesting at the same time. And it is a process, this is a process of revealing and not reveling. Sometimes we get into these classes and we start reveling in the story. So we do not uncover our stuff to revel in our sadness or to elicit sympathetic responses from our fellows but rather to expose the shadow side of our personality so that the light of spirit can heal it once and for all. Once and for all. So we don't have to keep going back and recreating the situation and reformatting it so that we can learn that lesson again. So that we can demonstrate a no, not only a life that has enough in it, but we can demonstrate a life of overflow. That's really what we are wanting to get to. And oftentimes, what I have seen within my own practice and within working with others is learning how to recognize the overflow that is often already there in many areas and overlooked. So that people think they can't be happy unless they have enough money, for instance. That's a big one. Yes, we need money. No, we need money. It's the coin of the realm. Right? And our happiness is not directly uh, related to it. It's not a direct correlation. I always think, and I know I've mentioned this before, I think of my relatives in Ireland who, who really had nothing. And yet, my Aunt Mary Ann was one of the happiest women I've ever met, ever. Raising... 11 kids in two rooms with a turf fire and no plumbing. <coughs> it is possible. We find that we live and move and have our being in the overflow. And that our life is an outpicturing of divine operation. The divine operation is a term coined by Judge Thomas Troward. And he writes this about divine operation. My mind is a center of divine operation. My mind is a center of divine operation. The divine operation is always for expansion and fuller expression. And this means that the production of something beyond what has gone before. So whatever has happened in our life before is not bound by that. It's not bound by anything. Something entirely new. So there's going to be a third thing. The old thing, some future, it's right now. Something entirely, entirely new, not included in past experience. Though proceeding out of it. How? By an orderly sequence of growth. By an orderly sequence, 
sequence of growth. And therefore, since the divine cannot change its inherent nature, it must operate in the same manner within you and within me. This is what it means to be a reflection of spirit. That the, that the way that the universe works, the laws that we have uncovered so far, right? so we didn't know electricity was out there until we, under, that, until we discovered it. And then we didn't really know what to do with it until we started playing around with it. Or magnetism. Or a lot of these, which are really new, really new discoveries. But they were there in the time of the caveman. Right? When we were painting on walls, electricity existed. Right? But we hadn't learned to harness it yet. It hadn't yet to be revealed. So that the, the natural laws of the universe are a reflection of God's mind. And that as we are an emanation of its creation, that some part of that is also us. That we are a reflection of it. So consequently, in my special world, in which I am the center, it will move forward, it being spirit will move forward to produce new conditions, always in advance of any that have gone before. Now when you read all of that, I've broken it up. When Trover puts it all together, and I think it's like a one-sentence paragraph, right? <clears throat> so what does all that mean? Well, first of all, it means that my mind is a center, not the center. Right? That's important to remember. It is a center, not the center. <clears throat> that everybody's mind is a center of God consciousness. In fact, you could say everything is a center of God consciousness, even though it may not be conscious, quote-unquote. <clears throat> the other thing is that since we are dealing with the infinite, there are no boundaries. And I think that we get used to thinking of the world as boundaries. No, this room has a center. We can find it. We can measure it. And as we are dealing with the infinite, there's not just one center, but many centers of which we are part of it. That all of us are part of the divine, the supreme, the all, the everything, the universal consciousness, the universal mind. We are part of the infinite. The divine is always for expansion and for expression. In this way, we too are always for expansion and fuller expression. So if we get into times within our life where we are feeling stifled or held back in some way, that's usually what it is. That we're not feeling like we're expanding. That, we're, that there are, there's some place where we can express more effectively and more fully. Because it is also our nature to be creative. Again, a reflection of divine mind. So the supreme power, the universal consciousness, always wants to express itself more through us. Hence, we should always... We should always explore ways to, for our true potential to come forward and to play with it and to experiment with it and to trust it, which means we have to take risks, which means we have to step out of the normal course of the way that we go about doing things. So, and to also know that whatever we have experienced in the past are really the building blocks to produce something entirely new that is not bound by anything that has happened in the past. Supreme power, the supreme power will operate through us because of its inherent nature and will give us new opportunities, always. The divine uh, this operation of the divine mind is within us, and that we are a center within it. It's, it's like uh, we are a cell. It's like we are in a cell in this, body, this infinite body of spirit. Each cell having its own nucleus, having its own support system uh, that supports that cell, and yet at the same time surrounded and embodied in a substrate from which information and nutrients are transformed 
or transferred, rather, transferred from to the entire organism. So that every aspect of the body is affected by what's going on in the cell. Each cell acting independently, working to its own encoded self-direction, and yet at the same time, working within the whole. Divine operation. So let's try this. Let's try this together. So my mind is a center of divine operation. Together? My mind is a center of divine operation. My mind is always for expansion and fuller expression. My mind is always for expansion and fuller expression. The inherent nature of spirit operates as me. The inherent nature of spirit operates as me. I am a center of the divine, and so is everything else. I am a center of the divine, and so is everything else. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see. Thank you. 